This tutorial will guide you through the basics of creating splines. The spline command can be accessed under the curve options in the insert menu. We will first focus on the through points method, which will create a spline curve which interpolates or passes through a set of user defined points. After selecting this option, the spline through points dialog will open. There are several options available within this dialog box. The multiple or single segment box allows you to set whether the spline is to be a single curve segment or a bezier curve or multiple curve segments attached at knot points. These are called B-spline curves. Multiple segment curves will allow for the easiest construction and give the best results with most applications. This is because using multiple segments allows you to create a spline with an unlimited number of points since single segments are limited to only 25 points. The curve degree option allows you to specify the degree of the polynomial defining the curve. For example, a curve degree of 3 would specify a spline curve that includes the cubes of the curve's defining parameters. Note that the curve degree option is not available when creating a single segment spline since that degree is instead determined by the number of specified points. The closed curve option, if checked, will mean that the defined spline will form a closed loop. Connection will be between the first point defined and the last point. After selecting OK, a dialog opens which allows the user to specify how control points for the spline will be defined. The chain options all require existing point entities, which can be created using the point method within the insert menu. We will discuss these later. If you wish to insert points to directly create a spline, you can choose the Point Constructor option, which will open the Point Constructor dialog. Remember when inputting control points that a curve requires at least one more control point than the order of the curve. So if in the previous dialog you set the curve degree to 3, you would have to define at least four control points. When you are finished defining points, select OK in the Point Constructor dialog. A verification dialog will then open up. Select Yes to continue. The Spline Through Points dialog will then reopen. You now have the option to specify slope and curvature, which is the rate of change of the slope, at control points along the spline. To assign a slope, you must first choose the Assign Slopes button. This will open the Assign Slopes dialog box. You are then prompted to select a point. Notice that there is no selection ball on the cursor. However, if you click anywhere near a point, the closest point will be selected, and the number of the point will be displayed at the status line in the top of the window. You must then open one of the slope method options. There are several methods for assigning slopes. The first is automatic slope, which will calculate the slope internally for all points by making inferences from the data points specified. The second option is vector component, when you choose this option, the DXC, DYC, and DZC fields are available. You may enter values to define a vector that specifies the slope at this point. The third option is direction to a point. This option allows you to define the slope at a point by specifying another point using the point constructor. The vector between the first and second point will define the slope at the first point. The vector to a point option is much like the direction to a point. This option will allow you to specify a direction using the point constructor. However, the distance between the two points, in other words, the magnitude of the vector, determines how strongly the slope affects the shape of the curve. The slope of a curve option matches the slope at the specified point to the slope at the endpoint of an existing curve. The angle option allows you to input an angle relative to the xc axis and counterclockwise about the zc axis, which will specify the slope at that point. After specifying the correct parameter values and the geometry for the slope method you selected, choose OK. You can continue repeating the last two steps until all slopes have been specified.
Note that you cannot assign slopes to your first order spline. If, however, your curve is at least third order, you have the option to specify its curvature. To assign curvature, simply choose the Assign Curvatures button and choose one of the curvature methods. These methods include curvature of a curve, which allows you to match the curvature to the curvature at the endpoint of another curve. After you select this option and indicate at which point to apply the curvature constraint, choose OK to select the other curve. You may also enter a radius to define the curvature. The radius value must be positive. After specifying the parameters for curvature, the rest of the procedure is much like that for defining slopes. If finished assigning slopes and curvature, or if no specification is performed, pressing OK will create a spline that fits through the points as smoothly as possible. Another option within the spline through points method is to create splines from an existing set of points. To use this option, first a set of points must be created. You can use the insert datum point method to create a set of non-associative points. Once a set of points is defined, all or part of them may be used for the spline curve creation. The input options for use of existing points all involve the words chain. The first option is chain from all. All existing points are available to be used in the spline definition. The user is prompted to select the start and end points by picking. Intermediate points are interpolated based on proximity. In other words, the software will search for the nearest point when selecting the next point to interpolate. Depending on which points are chosen as start and end, it is possible that some points will not be used in the definition. You may also choose Chain Within Rectangle, which allows you to specify a rectangle by picking diagonally opposite corners. Only the points within the rectangle are available for spline construction. After specifying your rectangle, you must then choose your start and end point. Chain within polygon is much like chain within rectangle, except that you will be asked to define vertex points of a polygon. Only those points within the polygon are available for spline construction. Another option for creating splines is to read points from an existing file. To use this option, the data file must first be created. The file must be a text file in ASCII text with no formatting. Each line of the file must contain the data for only one point, and the point must be defined by three coordinate entries in X, Y, and Z. And the coordinate entries must be separated either by spaces or tabs. Saving the file with the extension .dat will make it easier to identify since the default setting of Unigraphics is to search for files with this extension. To use the file, simply go to Insert Spline Through Points and choose the option Points from File. The points will then be input. A dialog will then confirm that you are done selecting points and then the curve will be created. Points will be used in the order in which they appear in the data file. Defining data for splines is stored in the spline's poles, which are its control points. Splines gravitate toward poles, but usually do not pass through them except at the endpoints. The location of defining poles is automatically inferred when creating splines through points. However, you may also define these points explicitly by creating splines by poles. Creating splines by poles gives greater control over the shape and character of the curve. The splines by poles dialog box begins exactly like that of the splines to points command. You must still choose a curve type and degree. 
and then we'll simply be prompted to input points to define the spline's poles. Specification of these points is done by the point constructor.